As a creative, coming up with an unexpected use for a common tool can be one of the best feelings there is. And that is the basis for today's video. Hi, I'm Dave, and welcome to my channel. If you've spent any time on Instagram looking at other designers' work, you've likely seen a whole lot of people using the 3D Inflate feature in Adobe Illustrator. I spent some time trying my hand at it too. I ended up making a set of characters for the 36 Days of Type that used Illustrator, Dimension, and Photoshop. I even tried exporting the 3D letters as OBJ files and having them 3D printed. It worked, but it wasn't as cool as I would wanted it to be. Overall, the 3D features in Illustrator had seemed neat but I wanted more. So I started playing with the 3D panel again, and this is the effect that I came up with. Topographic maps, or contour maps, have been an extremely popular background element for years, but I don't think I've ever seen them used in a text-based format. So let's jump into Illustrator, and I'll show you how I built this effect. Okay, here in Illustrator, the first thing we need to do is create a new document. Command N pulls up the new document window. And we can just go with the 10 inch by 10 inch square canvas. Whatever size you wanna use, that's up to you, but let's go with this. Hit Create. Now, on this artboard here, we want to create the rough outline of a letter. I'm going to use the brush tool for that. So B on the keyboard pulls up the brush. And we're going to create just the big flowing letter E. The original intention that I was going for was to create a bunch of liquid letters. So I'm just using the mouse here to create a big blobby looking letter E. Now there's going to be some smoothing applied to this. You can adjust the smoothing by double clicking on the tool itself. And I've actually got it cranked all the way to totally smooth, but you can reduce that or keep it like that to match what I was doing. Now here we can see if we zoom in and hit command Y to switch to outline mode that this path did not close. It's currently an open path by using the brush tool. So we can use the direct selection tool, A on the keyboard would have pulled that up. Pick up one of these points, drop it so that it snaps over top. Command U turns on and off smart guides, which is why that pink annotation was showing that there was that overlap. And then with the direct selection tool still, you can click and select both of these points and then hit Command J to join them together. Now, we have a closed path that we can work with, but it's still a little bit rough. There may be some other areas too that you'd like to adjust, so feel free to use the direct selection tool or the pen tool to make some adjustments to get to a spot where you're happy with it. But if your path is still looking a little bit rough, it's not 100% fluid looking, what you can do with the path selected is go up to Object, Path, Smooth. And then we can play with the slider here to smooth out any of those imperfections that were in the path. And by deselecting off to the side, we've now finished this step. One last step before we jump into the 3D panel is just to add a gray fill and remove the stroke. It doesn't really affect the final outcome, but it does help you visualize things in the 3D step that is to come. So if we go Object, 3D Materials, Inflate, our basic flat 2D path has now been given some depth with this 3D feature. Now this is where I created my 3D version of the 36 days of type and then I was rendering them in Adobe Dimension to add some more material and lighting effects. But what we're going to do here stays completely in Illustrator. The expand as wireframes quick action is going to give us basically the effect that I was going for with this tutorial. It looks like it's a contour map now. There's a little bit of roughness in here that I don't like. So right away, the first thing that I did when I saw this effect was to go object path smooth again. And it's gonna change the overall shape of the whole letter, but it smooths out all of those rough edges. Again, if we click off to the side, it will deselect. In this case, because there was more paths, Illustrator is a little bit slow with it. Now, I think everything here by default goes to a black stroke, but we can add whatever color you like there for your project. A little bit earth tone is kind of cool. Now, everything here is grouped. So if you pick up this letter, it's all connected. But we can switch back to the direct selection arrow. A on the keyboard will pull that up and then pick up this outermost path. And then if we jump into our stroke palette, which for me is buried over here, 
if we increase the weight of this stroke, I think it adds a nice effect, giving a nice definition to the outer border of our letter. The other thing that I did that I thought was kind of cool was to pick up the innermost paths, so the top points on our contour map, and then to add a dashed line to them. I've already got a series of dashes and gaps in here, but you can adjust to your liking. Obviously, if you remove a gap or remove a dash, it simplifies that pattern just down to a, a single dash. The other thing that I like to do with that is to apply a round cap on them. And that just makes those lines look a little bit more polished. I think I didn't do the same thing over here. Let's get a round cap on there. And this is actually my variation of the dash line, which I like more. So I'm going to pick up this path and I'm going to use the eyedropper eye on the keyboard to sample this stroke. And now that same stroke has been applied to both of those paths. And that is the basis for my topographic map type effect, which I don't think I've ever seen before, but it's a unique look that hopefully you folks will get good use out of. Now, one troubleshooting note here, I'm not 100% sure why it happened, but back in the 3D and materials panel, there were some times where I wasn't able to select expand as wireframes. Like I said, I'm not 100% sure why, but when it did happen and I wanted to get that wireframe effect, I was able to go up here to the render settings, select wireframe and hit render. The effect now looks the same, but is live. And we can now say object expand appearance and get back to that same point that the tutorial started at where I applied the smooth to this path. 